Well, thank you for coming here tonight. I know Friday night you probably have better things to do, but um, I'm, I'm very appreciative to have you here. And it's my first uh, book signing uh, in Dallas, which is my hometown. I live right here in Plano, so not too far from here. Um, so it's pretty special for me. And especially this is my first book ever, and uh, that makes it even much more special. Um, I don't know how these things go normally, so I'm going to maybe start just by giving you a little bit of my story, maybe just read a few passages from the book, and the best part, I think, is just to open it up for questions, because I think that's the best way to get the story across. But uh, maybe before uh, I talk about myself, I tell you a little bit about how I uh, came across Homer Hickam, who's my co-author. Um, as you know, he's a famous author who wrote uh, many books, but the most famous one, I think, is The Rocket Boys, which is his memoirs and uh, his passion for space, which I share with him. And um, he uh, started reading about me in the paper and learned that there was this uh, Iranian-American girl going into space uh, on a Russian, Russian Soyuz rocket. And he decided that, well, let me find out who she is and, uh, and find out about her story. So she contacted my office trying to get in touch with me. And of course, at that time, I was already in Russia preparing for my flight. And they told him that, well, I knew she was really interested to talk to you, but she's a little busy right now, you know, trying to prepare for her flight. And uh, she'll definitely get in touch with you once she returns. And um, he followed my blog. Um, I started a blog a few days before my trip, which, to my surprise, it became very popular, and mostly because I felt people appreciated my sort of honest and frank way of describing my experiences. And I hope I try to be as open and honest in writing this book and sharing my uh, experiences uh, you know, before even going to space. And um, uh, when I returned, he read my blog and he followed me on my blog. And then when I returned, uh, he talked to me and uh, he said, you know, if you decide to write a book, let me know and I'll be happy to help you. And a few other people had told me that maybe you should write a book and it's, you know, people want to know about your story and your background. And um, to be honest with you, I wasn't too crazy about the idea, you know, um, I'm sure he, you all would appreciate, you know, having to write everything there is to know about you, and uh, it's out there for the whole world to know. Not that I was afraid that, of people finding out about my life. It's just an uncomfortable feeling to be someplace and everyone knowing everything there is to know about you. Um, but uh, I thought about it, and um, I decided to write the book because I felt that um, one of my passions outside space is to get the uh, young girls, uh, especially young girls, but overall all kids interested in space, interested in math and sciences, and more importantly getting them to believe in themselves and to go after their dreams. And I figured that by sharing my story maybe I can provide that little inspiration they may need to go after what they love. And that was the reason I decided to write the book. And um, it was an interesting uh, experience. Uh, I had not written anything outside the blog and papers for school, so it was a learning experience. And uh, if it wasn't for Homer, probably I would have not finished the book because I kept wanting to just write about space. And he's like, no, write about your childhood. I'm like, no, I want to just write about space. And, uh, you know, we have ups and downs in our lives, and sometimes we just want to forget them and focus on the future. And... Um, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to focus on the best part of my life, which was space. And, um, but uh, through his uh, persistence, I, I, I tell him he beat it out of me. He dragged it out of me. Um, so it became a memoir that starts from my childhood in Iran, um, growing up in Iran, then coming here to the United States and building a new life, um, learning a new language, learning a new culture, and uh, eventually becoming a successful entrepreneur building a career and uh, um, uh, what which eventually led to me realizing a childhood dream that I had which was going to space. Um, the story I think it's sort of an immigrant story 
It's a uh, story of American dream. It's a, it's a love story. Um, so it's a lot of different things that came together, and it's sort of it's a personification of my multifaceted life, if you would. Uh, and um, I hope that you would enjoy reading it. Um, maybe I elaborate a little bit more on uh, more details of my personal life uh, in Iran. Um, I was born in a city called Mashhad uh, in Iran. And uh, I was about four or five years old when I moved to Tehran, which is the capital city, and uh, lived there for a while uh, until the revolution was the first thing that changed my life. And um, I was going to a French Catholic school. I'm not a Catholic, but I was going to a French Catholic school. Uh, and uh, because of the revolution, the school was closed after the first year, and we were moved around to different schools, and my friends were sort of spread all over. And life for women overall in Iran changed. And being a teenager uh, during the revolution and then later on the war in Iran, um, it teaches you a lot of things. I mean, I remember the first time I w heard the word revolution, I didn't really know what it meant. I mean, I had heard it, but I didn't have any concept of what it meant. And um, same thing with gunfires. I had never heard gunfires. I had never seen guns. I was never around guns. So a lot of things were sort of a learning experience for a teenager growing up. And then um, later on, uh, as I was getting ready for graduation, my parents um, decided that maybe it would be a good idea to come to the United States and start life over. Many Iranians, uh, some of whom are here, probably went through the same decision tree and decided that probably it's better to give up everything they have in Iran, leave everything behind, and come and start a new life in a new country that will give them a chance, and especially their children, a chance to have a better life. And um, that's what we did. And uh, the rest of the story talks about uh, me going to school, becoming an engineer, uh, meeting my husband, which is a, a big part of my life. And it's a big part of the book. As you read it, you will see that um, I feel that many things that happen in my life is because uh, the love we share and all the support and uh, unconditional support that I get from him. And that's why part of the reason the book is a love story. Um, I um, talk about how I had to put my passion for space on hold for a while. Um, of course, coming to US, I thought, well, this would be my best chance of becoming an astronaut. I'm going to the country that, uh, you know, space is a big part of and to spend the most amount of money on space program. But uh, I learned that there are other hurdles other than just being a good student that I had to overcome, like um, not having a citizenship, being here um, just after um, a lot of turmoil in Iran and the relationships were not that good. And um, starting life over in the country without a lot of money, my mom told me, well, I recommend you study something that will actually land you a job after you know school. And uh, nice Iranian girls always listen to their moms. So I did listen to my mom and um, um, decided to go to an engineering school, which was also something I really enjoyed. And um, that's eventually what led me to build a career in telecommunication and then starting a company later on. Um, Throughout this whole thing that happened to me, uh, it, probably most people would have given up on the idea of going to space because they would figure, well, I, my life has taken a different turn and it has nothing to do with space now. So it's probably a dream that was a childhood dream and they would forget about it. Um, but I felt that somehow I would find a way to eventually be able to fulfill that dream. Even though I was on a detour, I looked at it as a detour. And I figured, you know, maybe my company will come up with this amazing invention. Maybe I can do something that will cause NASA to want me to put me on, on a shuttle to go to space. So I always felt that I will find a way. And I didn't know how, but I felt deep down that I will find a way to go to space. And, um, and I think that pl that's a very important part of someone being able to achieve 
uh, a, a dream or a, a passion that they have. And uh, um, that, that's part of the reason when I go talk to students, I want that message to come across nice and strong.